An incriminating phone call was recently leaked in which Chris Chan admitted to an inappropriate relationship with her mother. The other person in the call happens to be Chris's most depraved troll yet. Let's investigate. If you enjoy internet mysteries, conspiracies and true crime, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. I also have a Patreon and a PayPal, so if you're interested in supporting the channel, feel free to check those out, links will be in the description. I recently uploaded a video on Chris Chan which summarised her life up until the most recent allegations against her. At the time of writing the notes for that video there was still some uncertainty regarding the details of it and I didn't feel like I had a clear enough picture on the incident with context to elaborate further on. I always considered doing a follow-up video if it's something that you guys wanted to see and I've since done some more research so here it is. This is probably going to be the last video I do on Chris Chan or anything related there's probably enough information to fill a hundred videos, but there are other creators that have gone more in depth, such as Gino Samuel 2.1's Chris Chan A Comprehensive History series, which has 60 parts so far and is still ongoing. On the 31st of August 2021, Chris Chan was arrested on charges of it, with the arrest being live streamed on YouTube. This came after a phone call was leaked online, in which Chris could be heard confessing to having sex with her 79-year-old mother, who suffers with dementia. Chris goes into significant detail on this call, saying that her mother made the first move, that it occurred every third night, and that God said it was okay. When I first heard this call, I did think it sounded strange that the woman who was talking to Chris didn't at all seem shocked by what she was hearing, and kinda sounded like she was encouraging Chris, but I didn't know the context or who this woman was, so I didn't know if Chris just started admitting this off his own back and the woman was just acting like it was okay to gain a confession. Obviously there are potential ethical issues and other issues involved with manipulating someone, even if it's just slightly, in order to gain a confession. People have confessed to crimes they had nothing to do with due to coercion and therefore a confession alone is not enough for a conviction. But the truth about this situation is so much deeper, so much more disturbing, and while I still can't condone Chris's actions if she is guilty, Bella is a totally awful person in her own right. Let's start by summarising and analysing the call and highlighting the problematic areas. The full call has not been released, but there is a 21 minute clip on YouTube, so we'll be going off that. Chris mentions that God says the relationship is okay, and Bella reassures her by saying if God himself said this is okay, then she has nothing to worry about. That's one of the many examples of Bella reinforcing Chris's justifications for what happened, and looking at how far the Sonitude delusions got taken, we know how easily swayed Chris is. Chris mentions the existence of fanfiction of her and Barbara, and says it came true. She says that Barbara made the first move, and that she was partially confused at one point, but then came round. Throughout, Bella sounds very curious and totally okay with everything she's being told. She asks questions as if casually talking about what she had for dinner or something. Chris says her attraction to Barbara started when she had dreams about having sex with her. She says she doesn't plan to marry her or anything, as they're already mother and daughter, to which Bella replies, there's no stronger bond than a mother and a daughter. Bella goes on to say she has a close relationship with her mother, but not that close, though she does project the kind of woman she's interested in with the kind of woman her mother is, in her words. To me that seems like she's trying to fake empathy with Chris. She obviously wouldn't want to go as far as admitting she has a thing for her mother on camera, even if it was a lie, but she said enough to trick Chris into a full sense of security with her, into believing there is some kind of connection between them. The conversation then temporarily moves on to Chris's belief that she is an interdimensional being, and Bella once again encourages her delusions. Chris says that the relationship between her and Barbara started on the 27th of June, and contact has occurred once every three nights since. She says that Barbara enjoys it, and they have an open relationship. 
Chris is currently dating another woman, Fiona, and Barb is single. She says she would like to be with someone younger, but that she doesn't really see a future with Fiona. For context, it seems that Fiona actually wanted to have Chris. It's not entirely clear to me whether she genuinely liked him, or if she was just the sneakiest troll of them all, but still found him attractive. Bella says she will be at the convention with Chris, making sure no one hurts her. She's clearly trying to build a fake rapport with Chris, pretending to be caring and looking after her, when in reality she's just yet another troll. A couple of minutes later, Bella says that she knows that Chris is a good, caring person, and that she's doing it because she loves her mother, which is another example of Bella basically sucking up to Chris in order to manipulate her. They talk about Bella's cat, then the audio cuts to Chris talking about Barb again, saying that Barb said that she was the best she ever had. And that's pretty much it, but there were clearly parts that were cut from that conversation, as it just jumps from one topic to another with nothing to bridge the gap, sometimes even mid-sentence. In fact, Bella actually later admitted in a private Discord chat that she just took random clips from the call, put it in random order, and even clipped it mid-sentence. She deliberately hid parts of this conversation, and we have to ask why. What we did hear was bad enough, but what are we not hearing? In what we can hear, the way that Bella talks to Chris is just so inappropriate. She's actually 20, so she's quite a bit younger than Chris, but there's still a clear imbalance in terms of maturity and general comprehension of the situation. She's manipulative throughout, perhaps in an attempt to obtain information to send to the police, but more than likely just for clout. Considering she leaked this call before contacting the police, and to my knowledge, she has never even reported it herself. There are even rumours that Bella coerced Chris into engaging in the relationship to begin with, though I haven't seen any solid evidence of that. I don't know if Bella thought people would hear that call and get behind her, but there is nothing okay about the way that she handled that situation. And I'm not a lawyer, but the idea that that phone call could be used as viable evidence in court seems very unlikely, especially considering it was edited. Following the leak, Kiwi Farms users began investigating Bella and discovered the context of the call, plus a troubling pattern in behaviour. The following information should not necessarily be taken as fact. There are screenshots and other evidence that support it, and I personally believe most of it to be true, but I can't personally verify the authenticity. Bella has used pseudonyms while interacting online, so the following screenshots will feature different names, but it's pretty clear in most of them who Bella is. It's unclear exactly how long Bella and Chris were in contact for, but it seems that Bella had tricked Chris into believing that they were very good friends. Bella claims that the phone call was actually around four hours long, but most of the discussion was not related to Barbara. It's clear that Bella was aware of the relationship between Chris and Barb before any of this was released publicly. She said in a Discord chat on the 27th of July that she thinks she's dating her mum, and the next day was when Chris admitted it to her. So she suspected it five days before Chris was arrested, and knew for sure four days before she was arrested, and said nothing publicly. She even apparently faked a 911 call to convince Fiona not to reveal the information. She should have reported the situation as soon as she had any reason to believe that that was the case, but instead she allowed the abuse to continue. Bella also fabricated screenshots of texts to try to make Chris look even worse than she already did, and told people to blame Fiona for leaking various pieces of evidence, not all of it authentic. Like Chris, Fiona is also reportedly autistic and was played by Bella too. It sounds like Bella was in quite frequent contact with Fiona, probably acting in a very similar way to how she was with Chris, but then she'd throw her under the bus to save her own reputation. She manipulated them both and was encouraging them to have sex at BronyCon so she could film it. In reality, it appears that Bella is actually interested in Fiona and spoke about stealing her from Chris. Bella admits to hacking Fiona and even doxed her, which has apparently resulted in Fiona having a mental breakdown, and she's now in a psychiatric facility. Bella got sidetracked by some smaller goals throughout this, but the end goal was allegedly to get Chris to take her own life. Let that sink in for a minute. This woman targeted a severely autistic and mentally ill person to torment to the point that she took her own life. Until now, Blue Spike was by far the worst troll. He catfished Chris, leaked private videos on the internet, 
and literally got her to put a Sonny Chew medallion up her What he did was unforgivable, but he was a child at the time, or at least claimed to be, still old enough to know that that behaviour is wrong, but he was a good seven years younger than Bella is now. Savage is an understatement when it comes to what Blue Spike did, but he still didn't literally conspire to get someone to take their own life. Chris might not even be the first individual that Bella has attempted to do this with. She has openly admitted to bullying her classmates in college and said in a Discord chat that one of her classmates took their own life and the server run by Bella was investigated in relation to that, potentially implying that she could have been involved somehow, though not much information is known about this incident. Said server appears to be a group of trolls operating under the guise of a chess club at the college and Bella seems to be the ringleader. They bully and harass students at the college and people online and she claims to have doxxed around 90 people. We already know she is transphobic but she has made countless racist comments too and frequently uses the n-word and other slurs. She also hates people with autism, perhaps part of the reason why she targeted Chris. I'm starting to believe that Bella's motives extend beyond those of the average troll into some kind of fetish potentially. She is well known to have various unusual, disgusting and straight up illegal fetishes involving animals, incest and children. She has allegedly created and distributed content on numerous occasions involving these things, which is not only highly immoral but illegal too. She has posted photos of herself when she was a child plus other children alongside inappropriate comments, partly because she's into that herself but also partly, it seems, to bait others. Given her interests, which often involve dominance over someone or something that is unable to consent and unable to fight back, I don't think it's much of a stretch to suggest that Bella's motive for trolling may actually be in nature. She feeds off it. Not that any of this would be acceptable by any stretch of the imagination, but Bella's sick fantasies don't only exist in her mind, she claims to have acted on them. It's impossible to determine what's true and what Bella has made up about herself for attention, but she has openly admitted on Discord to assaulting more than one woman. In addition to being attracted to animals, she has allegedly neglected, abused and killed numerous pets. One was a dog who apparently died from neglect after being left in Bella's closet, and that one probably had the best death. I don't really want to go into much detail on what Bella did to her other pets, or other animals in general as it makes me sick, but we're talking boiling alive and filming it for her gross gratification. She admitted a few months ago to killing eight hamsters and also talks about them. There are countless other things that Bella has admitted herself or that internet sleuths have found out about her. These include vandalism, stealing, plagiarism, planting hidden cameras to spy on people, being arrested for possession of a firearm, attempting to spike drinks, attempting to tase students and more. While it's all morally questionable at best, the rest doesn't even feel worth mentioning compared to what we've already covered. As I said before, take everything here with a pinch of salt because it's hard to know what's true and what Bella made up about herself, either for attention or to throw off anyone looking into this. But even if she made up some of these details, it's disgusting that she'd even want her name associated with some of the wicked things that have emerged. Bella isn't just your average kid having a laugh at someone else's expense. The way she talks to Chris and the things that she's done, the way she talks about herself and so confidently and nonchalantly admits such vile things, and in general the nasty things she has said and done to other people, suggest that she is a deeply depraved person. She is heartless, calculating and quite frankly dangerous when around vulnerable people. I can't mention enough that I do not condone Chris's actions if she is guilty of what she's been accused of, but it's an extremely complex situation and I think it's very hard to understand without being in her shoes. The level of bullying and abuse inflicted on Chris would be enough to destroy even the most sane person's psyche. The reason the thumbnail of the last video said how the internet fueled a monster is because Chris was already failed by his parents before he ever even began interacting online. It's impossible to say whether a good upbringing could have prevented any of this from happening. And we can't solely blame the trolls for the way that Chris turned out, but it certainly had a massive impact. I've asked myself throughout why I'm even covering any of this, and it's undeniable that part of it is morbid fascination, 
It's why Chris blew up in the first place, and it's probably why you're watching this video now. It's also partly to expose Bella for the monster that she is, because unless criminal charges are filed against her, awareness is the only way that we can deplatform her, and attempt to prevent anyone else being bullied, assaulted, and harassed by her. But I also think there's a very obvious but important lesson to be learnt here. Just be nice to people. You have no idea what someone is going through, what problems they are facing, and what the long-term consequences of your actions might be. No one is a winner in this situation. Chris is probably going to jail, Bella might well go to jail as well if evidence is found of her alleged crimes. And regardless, the internet now hates her, and many of the trolls who harassed Chris in the earlier years now deeply regret their actions too. There is literally nothing beyond a delusional sense of superiority that you can gain from bullying people on the internet or in real life. Sadly, Chris's life story will forever be an example of what happens when trolling gets taken to the extreme. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Has any of this context regarding that phone call changed your opinion at all? And do you think there might still be more to it that we're yet to hear? If you enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Huge thank you to my patrons, whose names are on screen now. I really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.